Uh, so one of my favorite indicators to use is the Klinger Volume Oscillator or the Klinger Oscillator or Klinger Volume Oscillator. Um, so on a simple chart, um, a lot of people use MACD. Um, it looks very similar to the MACD, uh, but it uses just the volume. So I'm going to zoom in here and show you how this works. Um, so you can see um, that the volume oscillator generally is positive um, when the volume is positive um, and is negative when the volume is negative. Now that depends on your settings. Um, so basically, just like the MACD, you have a signal period. Um, I specified uh, and then you have a short cycle and a long cycle. Um, so I specified my signal period to be the same as my short cycle. Um, it's basically just a moving average um, along this line. So um, take a careful look at this. You can see the clinger um, signal and then the volume bars increasing volume decreasing. So um, how do you use this to trade? Um, so basically uh, to make it really simple um, is that it does an average so um, when you do the um, short cycle of 8 and 16 um, you basically have um, a chart that looks kind of similar to this one um, and when it gets to be positive that means that for the past um, 16 to 8 intervals um, it's primarily starting to change, um, so you can start to see some negativity here, uh, and then the volume uh, kind of reverses over. So um, some interesting things about um, the Klinger volume oscillator is that um, when the red bars show up, that means that the volume is kind of slowing down in that direction. Um, so, for example, um, here you have it being more and more negative, but then it goes opposite color, green bar showing up. So, on this side, it means that you're starting to have some green volume or um, some slowing down of the negativity. So, here we saw that it was still pretty negative, and what can typically happen um, during a price move like that, let's change this back to this. So, um, this is just a regular chart, not a Heiken Ashi. So, um, here you can start to see um, basically it was still positive, but the negative volume um, from these other candles ahead of it um, really were quite negative. So it still stayed on the negative territory. So it's not until it gets to positive territory that you really want to start thinking about um, getting into the trade as a pot, as a buy, right? Or if you want to get into a sell. So, um, so in general, when we talk about trends and momentum, um, there's a couple ways to measure that. Um, so one way is to simply say, is it above or below the zero line, right? So if it's above, the trend is positive. Um, and that's not always perfectly clear because there's a signal line that you need to measure as well. So it does take some more time for the signal line to get up to the positive land. Um, and so by that time, sometimes it's just maybe not ready to even buy anymore so or sell. So, um, But in general, the way that you measure a trend is you can see that this is definitely an uptrend. Um, and then the interesting thing about this indicator um, is that you can draw all these very important horizontal lines. Um, so these can give you um, very good accuracy of how many, what the volume should look like per day. Um, and what the magnitude of that volume should be. So um, if you start seeing it getting too positive, you can start saying, well, it's just too positive. Um, it's maybe going to turn around a little bit. We've already had enough positive volume for the day. Um, and then maybe we can get some reversal at that point. So that helps you know, and you can kind of see right in here when this clipped off here, you saw a peak and then a drop for the rest of this time. So. Um, that's one example, um, and it's usually for the following day. This is a daily chart here. Um, so I use it even on a per minute basis. Um, I'm going to load up a per minute chart here and can kind of see what happens. So uh, on a per minute chart, um, it's a little bit different uh, to use. I'm just going to go back uh, into some time frames here. So this was actually a very choppy day, so it's kind of a, um, one of the more difficult days to read. Um, but we can take a certain point here where it kind of drops. So you can see that it was positive. Um, it's kind of going positive, negative, positive, negative. And these um, horizontals and verticals. So if 
I'm actually going to change it to five minute charts just so we can look at multiple days. Um, so uh, here we have multiple days and we can start to see um, some of these trends, right? So we can say there's pretty much a trend here and pretty much a trend there in the five minute. Um, and these are the um, daily cycles. So you can see in here um, basically what happened. So that was pretty choppy. This is kind of a flat day. Here was a more of a positive day, um, but the volume. Um, so the other thing about this indicator is it is always is pretty choppy because you get these positive volumes, negative volumes, um, kind of all mixed in with each other. Um, so you got to really monitor it carefully. Um, and now the way I use it is because it's on an eight eight sixteen. Um, so here's this I got a signal period of eight, short cycle of eight, long cycle of sixteen. So. Basically, you want to use it. I use it oftentimes. I'll enter on the white signal when it crosses. Um, so this could be a short in here, for instance, right? Probably a better short back in here um, at this point here, right? It stays short longer. So, and you can see a, quite a negative spike right in here. So, um, and that actually did pre tell you it back in here. You could tell that there was some negativity. On the volume um, and you can maybe get that short a little bit early now getting out of it can be also tricky so you got to remember um, some of these uh, turnarounds here can be kind of quick and fast on these cleaner volume oscillator so there are different ways to talk about uh, reversals and divergences so here you can kind of see on a daily chart um, that let me remove some of these lines uh, to get this a little more clear here so we can see what is going on. So here, this period shows that we have kind of a lowering of this and increasing on the negativity. So even if this is going up, we know that there was, there was definitely not a lot of support for that on the clear volume oscillator. And it did indeed turn around right here. You can see the turnaround in the clear volume oscillator and it kind of got negative here. So. Um, and then definitely, um, this is outside of the bounds. This is a breakout um, of that range. So you can see that it's quite a big change. So this to me is a very big breakout. And then that also converges here. So you can start to see a new trend starting to form on these upward trends. So now you can take this one here and then take this one back here and then start to extrapolate. Maybe we might see even that. So you could have even predicted these two points based on that. Now, this one here would have been a little bit difficult to spot. Um, we would maybe have to do it based on something like this. Um, so you can see that there is some, some evidence for a trend um, heading upwards right at this point. So it actually converted here. Um, it it uh, jumped, it broke out of this uh, channel here, um, right? the ninth so uh, just a way to take a look at this carefully now support and resistance is a little bit strange uh, when using these charts uh, for uh, the volume oscillators right so a support line um, is basically it's kind of like opposite right so basically what you have to do is you draw a line here um, and let's do a horizontal so basically up here this is actually a level of resistance, right? So basically, once you get to this point, your the volume just typically doesn't get too much higher than that. Um, so you're starting to get to a point where maybe there's going to be a turnaround no matter what happens. And then here, you get a level of support. So basically, once it gets this negative, you know that, man, uh, it's not going to get that much more negative, um, and it's got to go back positive again. So the funny thing about patterns uh, when using the cleaner volume oscillator is they're super common. They're so common that you don't even notice them, right? We see these up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and that's basically the basic pattern. So uh, basically what we're looking for is the extremes of those patterns um, and then kind of the midpoints in here. So you can see that uh, these histograms kind of give you an inner pattern um, of the gap. So basically, this histogram is formed by the distance between these two, um, between the signal line and the clinger line, so the white line. So that tells us um, approximately what kind of moves we should see 
um, when going up or down. Um, so that's another way to think about the pattern is that we got an inner line here and we got an upper line here. So we kind of are seeing some positive moves. I have to bring this down a little bit, but um, basically this looks like some pretty good positive size moves in the volume. Um, and that's a pretty good sign. So you definitely want to switch around time frames. I was using primarily the daily time frame um, in this analysis here, um, but it is nice to use uh, like the 60 minute time frame as well as the 15 minute, five minute and one minute. Um, so those are all very helpful as well. Anyway, if you have any questions about what's going on with the cleaner volume oscillator, try it out, um, take a look at it yourself and then maybe post a comment or um, ask me a question, I'd be glad to try to help you out. Um, let me know what you think of the video. Um, be, please like and subscribe, and I'd be glad to um, bring some more material like this in the future. Thanks so much. See you.